Good morning, everyone. This is Andrew on day 10 of the 500K challenge, the challenge put on by Bill Allen of Seven Figure Flipping to post 30 days, uh, post on Facebook for 30 days and let everybody know what I'm doing in real estate investing and how they can join me, partner with me to gain profits in real estate. So the goal is to raise 500K in 30 days. I'm just going to talk to you today about the profit centers of real estate. I'm going to try something new. I've got a whiteboard going here, uh, just experimenting with different things, see what works, what doesn't work, learn a little bit along the way. So I'm going to show you today some of the cash, uh, the sorry, the profit centers of real estate and how they can benefit you and why uh, it works in real estate. So number one, and this is probably the most key benefit is cash flow and forgive my writing I have terrible handwriting so cash flow I mean it makes sense it's it's the cash that you get from the properties now you want to make sure in my impression cash flow is very important because there are some investors that invest for appreciation um, especially in expensive markets like Toronto where you'll buy an asset um, you know a pre-build or even um, you know, it could be a, a fully detached uh, existing home that you're you're anticipating in the Toronto market is going to increase in value, and of course it will. Um, but I, I like to invest for cash flow because it, it really provides. First of all, I want my investments to pay me for having them. I don't want to have to potentially pay them. And what ends up happening is if if you're only appreciation investing, you can run into situations where you're in between tenants or. Um, you know, there's all sorts of things that happen. Repairs come out of your own pocket. Uh, if the the cash, the, 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 the rents aren't covering every expense. Um, so cash flow is great for one for a couple of reasons. One, you're building up reserves. So if you're gonna if you're gonna be renting um, uh, properties, you want to have a reserve fund for general maintenance as well as capital maintenance and capital repairs. You know, an air conditioner breaks is, is a bigger expense. So you definitely want to have some reserves and the cash flow allows, you know, for all those things to be covered and then also pay you. So you want to have all your maintenance covered. You want to have your, your mortgage covered. You want to have your property management. If you're, if you're hiring a property manager, which I definitely recommend as well as your insurance and your property tax and the whole kit and caboodle. So definitely you want to have cash flow. It provides that safety net, but it also provides you with money in your pocket, assuming everything's going well. So cash flow is definitely king. You're going to want to have that. And that's all based on your numbers. When you're, when you're buying a property, you really need to calculate all the factors in because you can make some small mistakes that um, will eat away at this if there's not enough profit margin. So number two is mortgage pay down. So you buy a property, you put some tenants in it, and the tenants are paying your mortgage. So you start out with $100,000 mortgage, let's say, and at each month, the tenant pays the principal and interest. And as time goes on, they're reducing your mortgage. As they reduce your mortgage, your equity, so you got mortgage down, equity up. So now you're making profit. Now, at the moment, while it's mortgaged, you're not seeing it. It's not like you can access it. You need to refinance for that to happen, but you can eventually pull money out of the house. So that actually builds your net wealth. So mortgage pay down is another great bit. Now we also have taxes and these are tax ad and so the tax advantage is everything to do with your real estate investing is tax free. Well, let's not say that. It can be used as write offs. So you have, um, let's say you've got your interest from a loan. So if you were to use, for example, a HELOC in order to put a down payment on a property or even in some markets you could buy an entire house with your, your your HELOC potentially so the interest on that is tax deductible any 
closing costs are tax deductible. Any, um, depending on how you're running it, you can, you can write off office expenses, uh, accountants, lawyers, uh, any expense that is related to operating that property. So tax advantages can be great. So you're writing it off against the, the profit from your um, from your rents. Now, similar to taxes, there's also, I just want to see if you can see this, depreciation. All right, that's very messy, but depreciation. Uh, depreciation, You did you know that you can actually write off depreciation over, I believe, 27 and a half years off the, 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 the price of the, the house. So you can depreciate the house X amount over 27 and a half years. So you can apply that money towards any, any gains on the property as well, bringing down your taxable income. So these are four of the basic pros of, uh, of, of real estate investing. Sorry, stumbling there. Anyway, I'm gonna save the other three for tomorrow because uh, I've made a big mess here, but definitely uh, tune in tomorrow for more cash flow or uh, sorry, profit centers of real estate. Uh, I'll work on my my stumbling here a little bit, but there you go. Thanks for tuning in, everyone. Until tomorrow, have a great Monday.